Dave Dixon, Fort House District. Uh, I'm going to read this one. <laughs> I'd like to ask the board to clear up some of the confusion surrounding the draft of the Ridgeline Tall Structure Hike Ordinance. The ordinance clearly states the necessity to restrict the construction of tall structures on certain protected mountain ridge lines in Floyd County. And a map of the county protected ridge lines will be adopted and incorporated into the ordinance and will be maintained in the county building inspector's office. Some of the misconceptions as to the objective of the ordinance come from the definition of the protected ridge line as, as 2,000 feet above sea level. And the lack of a map that clearly shows the protected ridge lines that will cover that will be covered under the ordinance. The 2,000 foot elevation was not set by the Board of Supervisors, but comes directly from the Virginia Code 15.2-2295.1, which this ordinance is based on, and was discussed in a previous Board of Supervisors meeting that the 2,000 foot elevation might be needed to be adjusted to better reflect only the ridge lines to protect. At that time, it was left to, the, to be reviewed in conjunction with establishing the protected mountain ridge line map that will show ridge lines that will be protected by this ordinance. I know the board has been busy with normal business and with elections and setting of two new members. But, it, it, I, but I respectfully ask if there has been any additional discussions or decisions about the 2,000 foot elevation or development of the protected mountain ridge line map that you share it with us to help clear up the, the confusion. Having been present in most of the Board of Supervisors meetings and Planning Committee meetings during the open discussions surrounding this ordinance and its intent, I know firsthand that the intent of the ordinance is to protect the mountain ridge lines for various reasons as stated in the ordinance and not to set a countywide building restriction as some have openly expressed. <coughs> Your help in clarifying this issue is greatly needed and would be appreciated. I want to thank the Board of Supervisors for scheduling a night meeting each month that gives citizens that work during the day an opportunity to attend and express their concerns. I'm Helen Best St. Clair and I reside at 2461 Ridgeview Road in Indian Valley District of Floyd County. And I consider it an honor and a blessing to have a front porch view of the majestic Wills Ridge. I was born and raised in Floyd County, lived here for 19 years before moving to Montgomery County. My husband and I moved back to Floyd in 1996 and we chose Floyd County not only for the natural beauty, the peace and quiet, and the wonderful water but a place to retire and enjoy country living. I'm not for zoning of property, nor ordinances that will hinder someone from doing what they want with their property, as long as it doesn't adversely affect the adjoining property owners, the community, or the county. I come before you tonight asking that you draft and pass an ordinance that will protect the property owner's rights to build dwellings, barns, etc. on his property but also one that prohibits industrial wind power plants. Our home is our life's investment, and it's very upsetting to think that we could lose 30 to 40 percent of that investment due to the loss of our property value if these wind turbines are allowed. It is even more upsetting, though, to think that we could lose 100 percent of the quality of life. I don't want to hear the noise of these turbines and see the flicker effect from anywhere, everywhere on my property, inside the house, outside the house, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. In closing, I want to ask a favor of each of you. Tomorrow morning, I want you to walk out your front door, look at your view, listen to the sounds of the morning, and then imagine how it would be to hear the constant roar of a jet plane. Blink your eyes a few, every few seconds and imagine how you would cope with the constant flicker effect. And then imagine how it would be to have in your view a huge overpowering 490 feet metal obstructions 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Please draft an ordinance that will preserve Floyd County. As a member of the board, it's your duty 
to protect us from such devastation and preserve our quality of life, not just only for us, but for our children and our grandchildren and future generations. Although wind is a renewable resource, the environmental conversion costs to harness and utilize industrial wind are staggering, neither clean nor green. On a per kilowatt hour basis, subsidies for wind are 26 times those for fossil fuels. According to the EIA, the United States Energy Information Administration, converting wind to electricity has the highest cost of any conventional power source. The federal subsidy report states this data. Total cost per megawatt for wind, $52.43. Nuclear, $2.78. Hydro, $4.00. Natural gas, $0.63. These figures do not even include the cost of backup generation, line loss, incoming power requirements for the, of the turbines, and ancillary costs. Statistics have also shown that bats save Floyd County two and a half billion dollars, excuse me, million dollars every year in agricultural and forest insect damage. Yet approximately two bats die for every megawatt produced by wind. So, if a site was able to produce 8,200 megawatts, that means about 17,000 dead bats. Wills Ridge is not an optimal wind site. So it makes even less sense to sacrifice our scenery, soil, water, wildlife, and well-being. The turbine sites generate a considerable amount of industrial waste. Oils, lubricants, coolants, solvents, wastewater, all increasing the hazards to humans and wildlife. The impact of runoff and blasting to aquifers, wells, springs, and creeks makes this proposal an extremely risky idea. To construct these turbines and their bases involves 6,000 gallons of water per base for the concrete mix. Another disturbing factor is the problem of airborne dust containing herbicides after the area is altered and degraded. The additional transmission lines will also be unsightly and require more maintenance loss of acreage, habitat, paleontological and cultural resources. The EPA says that 60 acres per installed megawatt are needed, which for a 20 turbine, two and a half megawatt facility comes out to 3,000 acres irreparably impacted by clearing, roads, power lines, transformers, loss of habitat. Undoubtedly, there are some suitable sites for wind turbines. The criteria for such a location would be no residents, previously cut over land, less view shed, and no impact on water sources. People living even a mile away are severely troubled by the noise of the turbines so that some sites are required to turn off the blades at night so <coughs> people can sleep. And I'd like to see David Morissette have some turbines up there, but they're going to have to be small ones that we taxpayers don't have to pay for. It would be nice to have the winery supplied with power, but to have some foreign country devastate Wills Ridge with our tax dollars is simply appalling. It's Rick Wagoner. My wife and I live on Wills Ridge. I don't know how many of y'all can see it, but it's the most beautiful place on earth. I have a beautiful view, and it's just, would be a shame to ruin it. Personally, if you're looking for um, yeses and noes, we're definitely in the no column. I'm Jackie Van Gotten of Little River. I'm a member of the advisory council for the New River Valley Agency on Aging. The NRVA provides services crucial to adults 60 years and older in Floyd County. The older adult population represents 25% of the total population. It's about 3,834 aging citizens out of 15,279. Examples of the services to elder citizens are home delivered meals, respite care, homemaker help, disease prevention, elder abuse prevention, transportation, etc. 
budget funding for FY2012 is in the amount of $5,220. The request for FY13 is $5,377, or an increase of $157. This amount would provide a dollar 40 cents per person per year for needed services. <coughs> Hopefully this request will be met in full. I note that funds for a tourism study and walking trails are or may be made available from public funds. These projects, while desirable, would be more appropriately privately funded. Kathleen Inglesby from the Courthouse District. And a few meetings ago, I showed a video, and there's been a follow-up. Um, and I thought I would just give you the follow-up. This concerns the Kaiser West Virginia wind farm uh, development and the uh, complaints by residents about the noise, so it gives some evidence to the concerns about the noise from the wind turbines. And it's especially important because these turbines are the same size as the ones that are proposed here by Nordex. They're two and a half megawatts. The ones at Beach Ridge are um, only 60% of the turbine size, so that it's a different comparison. So I thought it would be important to, uh, there was a news follow-up, so I put the original clip, because I know you just looked at it on the, a laptop, on a uh, QuickTime movie, so you can just put it in the computer and look at it. And also a follow-up newspaper report, which states that the utility in uh, Edison, utility in Kaiser, West Virginia, has contacted the wind company to try to come to a solution for these people, and <coughs> the solution is to ask them to put a muffler on the turbine. So uh, both reports are here. 